Today marks the end of Eric Ten Hag's first week of pre-season training as Manchester United manager. And here on United People's TV, I've been focusing on what's been going on with our pre-season. We started on Monday by taking a look at what we should expect to see from pre-season this week. I followed that up by taking a look at the, at the early reports that were coming out from training and about patterns of play that we could immediately see there. And then yesterday, I followed that up by taking a look at a couple of videos, some, some training drills, and the early signs of what we're seeing from Ten Hag's system at Manchester United. That's what he's working towards. And in today's video, I want to focus on a report from Melissa Reddy, who is the chief reporter over at Sky Sports, and the inside story after an intense first week from Eric Ten Hag. The videos have gone down really well. I'm really happy that they have because I consider them informative and I think it's good to focus on what Ten Hag is doing with this current squad. New signings, transfers, we need that on top. Of course we do. But Ten Hag should be getting more out of this current squad. In this video, I'm going to run through Melissa's article and get some insight from there as to what the players have really felt, how they responded and reacted to the training. It should be a good video. So please, if you do enjoy it by the end of it, go down. Hit that subscribe button right at the bottom there. Hit the notification bell as well and you'll get a little message every time we go live with a video like this. But as I said, let's run through this article because there's, there's some really key quotes that I want to pull out and dive into in a little bit more detail. Let's run through it now. At the description, one of Manchester United's senior players reached for was intense. Not just on the body, but the mind. He wants you to think, think, think. And it's, he's saying there that the, he's, he's left quite an imprint on the squad and the staff straight away. And the biggest change multiple United sources have noted is how immersive the manager is during sessions and time spent with the ball during drills. Now that's going to be a bit of a change from what we had previously, but of course it's going to be intense straight away. This is pre-season. First and foremost of any pre-season, the players get fit again. That's the basis of pre-season, all right? That's, that's not going to change. And the idea of, of, of it being intense under Eric Ten Hag, that will come as no surprise to any of you. I've covered it in detail before. Let's run through it again today. These are quotes from Nick Marsman, who is a goalkeeper that worked under Eric Ten Hag. Three different clubs. He said, I worked with him a long time in the academy at FC Twente. He brought me into the first team. Then he brought me at Go Ahead Eagles and Utrecht as well. He said, I really like him as a coach, but he's very demanding. At Ajax, at first, he changed a lot in training and he demanded a lot of the team. They were unsure. They were like, well, we're already playing at a high level. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this every day? But after a while, they were saying, yes, it works. All this stuff takes time. But if anyone shows a lack of concentration or focus, he is right on top of that. And that's one thing that really has come across during through, through what I've seen this week and the response from the players. He's leading every element of training. Now, that's a big, big change, right? That is a huge, huge change from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, was, he delegated. Delegated to Carrick, delegated to McKenna, delegated to his coaches. And it probably all part and parcel contributed to the fact that everyone was a bit confused as to what was going on. It's why we never created our defined styles of play. But Ten Hag stepping in there and leading every element. And as it, it's saying there, a lot of time is spent with the ball during drills, which I will go into next. But first and foremost, it's about the intensity of preseason. It has to be there because training should be more difficult than the match itself. It's something that I say quite a few times because then the match is easier, right? That's the whole concept. It's not the whole concept of training. It's a massive concept of training. But going into that bit there, it's probably the most important point that we can take away from what we've learned so far is that Ten Hag is really doing a lot of ball work. And again, oh, it's a football team. Of course, they should be doing a lot of ball work. Yes and no. Um, it's talking about the contrast with predecessors, which I ran through there on, on Carrick there. But look, so he says that there's been a heavy concentration on what to do in possession. Ten Hag's deep analysis of United highlighted an issue of fear and uncertainty when on the ball. And we all know that is correct. Hell, look, you've even got pictures of Tom Heaton and the goalkeepers getting involved in possession-based drills. Man United, I don't have to tell you this, but I'll run to the tactics board. We know full well that any time in the last however many years that we've received the ball, well, you could probably go bigger than that. But in that area, we collectively shit ourselves. We do not know what to do with the ball. It's like hot potato. Everybody's scared to do something with the ball. It ends up going back to David De Gea. We end up hoofing it. We lose possession. We go back into shape and back into defense. That is the big, big reason why that lad's been will be signed. It's a case of when and not if. That's why De Jong's being brought in to, to really combat that fear. 
That word there, fear and uncertainty when on the ball. That's what United have had for so, so long. And Ragnick sort of switched, not switched, but Ragnick was obsessed with off the ball, how United were out of possession. Trust me, that's going to be part of Eric Ten Hag as well. That's not going to be V, that's not going to be stage one, but that will be probably stage two. This is a video that I did previously, and this is how what Eric Ten Hag speaks about when he talks about off the ball movement. Oh, there he goes again. Two of me. One of me is enough. Eric Ten Hag will get these players really working. Going back to the original quotes there. Intense. He wants you to think, think, think. Going back to what Louis van Gaal said. Remember when he was talking about training the mind? That's certainly one thing that Ten Hag is doing. But there's been a lot of ball work. A lot of possession-based work. And I like that. That concept there. He's highlighted that issue of fear and uncertainty when on the ball. We have such a fear and uncertainty. It's why we can't do passing moves. It's why we've got to move so quick through the transitions. And why that has to change so much under Eric Ten Hag is one of his biggest jobs, for sure. And that's why De Jong is such a transformative signing when it happens. Scrolling through, let's see what else Melissa is reporting here. Because he Going back to talking about Solskjaer. The team could counter to devastating effect under Solskjaer, but there were no defined sequences or structure. That's what I spoke about there. And Radnik was obsessed with defensive work and how to manage a game when the opposition had possession, with less emphasis on constructing attacks. And we know that, right? We look at Radnik and his reign. We shut it. We, we really tightened the defence quite quickly, but our ability to go forward diminished massively. And our finishing just went... Well, it just disappeared. What was it 72 shots? Remember, was it Burnley? Uh, who was it? Burnley, Middlesbrough. God knows who else. Southampton, maybe. Three games where we absolutely should have won and easily we didn't because we couldn't finish our dinner. The Randick definitely had a bit of an obsession to do with the defence and it helped, but it took away from our attack. And that's now changing again under Ten Hag. A Ten Hag is determined to have his players comfortable on the ball. And look, this bit here is probably the bit you're going to get most excited about, I would say. Ten Hag steps in each time a directive is not carried out properly, guiding players through exactly how he wants it to be done. Not good enough, give me the maximum, has been a repeated Ten Hag line, which is offset by the encouragement he offers when the highest level is achieved. That basically sounds like a bit of a shit sandwich. Now, what is a shit sandwich? I hear you ask. It's a pretty standard method of management. You, you say one bad thing uh, uh, with a good thing in the middle, surrounded by another bad thing. Ten Hag is clearly somebody who won't be afraid to tell people when they're getting it wrong, when they aren't putting it in the maximum. He is an authoritarian. He's not an authoritarian. He's a disciplinarian. But he's somebody who will compliment people when they get it right. And that's good management. Maybe the shit sandwich is a bad analogy to use in this sense. That is something I think that all United fans will, will put, probably put a big smile on a lot of faces. Not good enough. Give me the maximum. He doesn't want 60%, 50%. He wants 100% every time. That intensity. He wants to maintain that intensity. And stepping in every time that it doesn't go correct, that's hands-on management. That's making sure. That's why he's known as that obsessive coach. Because he wants to do it his way. And the players will listen to that. I think the players will appreciate that. And they'll respect it. Because he has success at, at, at Ajax. He's done it before. And these players need to listen. If they don't listen, they will be kicked out of the team. They will be replaced by others. That much is simple. But honestly, the more you read into everything that's been reported on the first preseason, first week of preseason, sorry, it's all really, really positive. It really is. And I think that's a good thing. And it's reading a little bit more here towards the end of this article said Ten Hag is understood to be pleased with how the squad have embraced and adjusted to his demands, including turning up at 9am. Imagine turning up at 9am for work. Who possibly could have come up with that idea? Uh, De Gea is among those who have positively commented to staff about the improved discipline, standards, and Ten Hag's clear ideas. And talking about the very direct, direct way, direct way, uh, Jonathan Ross there, di direct way, so while his sessions are intense, they are easy to understand. And that's what you have to be as a good manager. You have to be able to balance that disciplinarian side. Jose Mourinho went too far. Solskjaer didn't go far enough. 
players took the piss. Players didn't listen to Jose. They clashed. Ten Hag has to find that balance in between the two. And by the sounds of it, he's found that straight away. And it's been a positive week for sure. And the final notes here, uh, Ten Hag's also been enthusiastic, helped to create an enhanced mood. He's laying down the law. Staff have been motivated because he's already shown the coaching ability and an improved dynamic. Talking about how the conditioning and the fitness will be streets ahead and there will be greater technical play and a clear tactical framework. The, the whole squad's not there, right? And 12 more are joining up on Monday. I think the likes of Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano Ronaldo, Rafael Varane, um, Harry Maguire. Lots of senior players are going to be joining up with that squad. But I'll tell you what, I think it's good that a lot of the youth has been there for week one because they would have set a really hyper-enthusiastic tone because they want to impress Ten Hag so much because it's their week of opportunity. With so many first-team players not there. They're the ones who can set the tone. It now means that when the senior players come in, they're going to have to match that enthusiasm and intensity of the younger players or they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. And Eric Ten Hag will not take that. Going back to that in that in back to this quote here, the idea of not good enough, give me the maximum. Eric Ten Hag, he's got a stern look. He's got, I told you, he looks like um, Hector Salamanca. He's just got that, that sort of snarly look, but it's been a really positive week, I would say, as far as week one of Eric Ten Hag's preseason has gone. Let's see how it continues to develop. I'm not saying he's pulling up trees, but Man United have forgotten the basics as a football team for so long that when we hear and see the basics that are getting implemented, you can start to get a nod towards what's coming and how we can start finally climbing that ladder and getting back towards the top table that we haven't dined for for a long, long time in the Premier League. But I hope you've enjoyed these videos this week. I've enjoyed doing them. I think they're insightful and they offer a little bit of information. And on the internet, it's kind of hard to get the right information from somewhere. So if you did enjoy it, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV because there'll be plenty more of this as the preseason and the season starts. But Ten Hag, it's been a good start. I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next.